E15519168. These are post judgment proceedings on the Van Buren and Tyra case. Uh, plaintiff is present. Plaintiff's counsel is present. Please confirm appearance for video record. Uh, you are Michael Luke for the same party that's in the first one. Plaintiff is present. However, defendant is not. We are here, or the setting was initially set by the defendant's motion. It's styled motion to dismiss case for lack of jurisdiction and conflicts of interest. And uh, that motion was opposed. I mean, uh, the court has reviewed the motion, the response, and opposition, and it's uh, has no merit. I mean, not only does this case court have jurisdiction, it's issued a series of judgments. Um, those judgments have been appealed. Those appeals have been addressed and resolved. And uh, I, there's just no merit to the motion. Now, the defendant isn't here in support of the motion. Um, uh, my staff told me that she called and said that she couldn't appear or wasn't going to appear, but I, I wanted to, uh, since the hearing on May 22nd, 2019, uh, and at that time we talked about uh, the collateral jurisdiction of the court to enforce its orders. Uh, we issued a bench order, uh, a bench warrant for the production of the child that was set pursuant to 125C. And we signed a series of orders, Mr. Root, that you submitted uh, because of uh, uh, various roadblocks you had in trying to enforce the order. And so uh, the court has asked for you to, um, and you've done what you need to in order to show that you made these applications and why you made the applications. Now since then, um, the court received a, uh, an order denying rehearing request dated May 23rd, 2019 from the Court of Appeals. Uh, we had certified to the Supreme Court that because mom had abducted the child and was uh, essentially keeping the child from the custodial parent and that we'd issue warrants to have the child picked up and um, then warrants for mom uh, to be picked up for the purpose of enforcing the custody order uh, we received an order granting motion for remand dated June 14, 2019, which essentially said that they received the motion under the Honeycutt uh, principles uh, in which the court advised the Supreme Court that uh, because of things that had occurred since the orders that were on appeal, uh, there was a basis to consider a request to modify the uh, custody order, essentially to suspend uh, her legal and physical rights. Uh, I have also received a remitter. Um, we received it June 24th. So I don't see any impediments to dealing with that piece of it. In other words, this court has jurisdiction. Uh, I, I'm a little bit concerned because we've had uh, evidentiary proceedings recently. Uh, we've had motion hearings in which we've described the various appeals and the various uh, uh, attempts that you've made to try to secure possession of the child. None of those orders have been uh, set aside. Um, mom's in violation of the court order. She, her keeping of the child from dad is unjustified. Uh, her filings for, that were set for today uh, show uh, that she doesn't uh, uh, intend to follow the court orders. And uh, this is fundamental to uh, I guess a safe sharing of a child between parents. Your Honor, I have yeah. a, I've taken a little bit of preparing in order for the courts to. Well, I need to see it, but just it, we've had problems with you doing orders that I haven't uh, read or approved because you know you're an advocate for your client, but sometimes you put in stuff that is uh, I can't sign off on. So, well, Your Honor, this has uh, just to do with our motion that we requested the court. Uh, well, the order from the Supreme Court. Uh, let me let me look, let me look at it, Mr. Reed. Look. Your client doesn't have a child yet, does he? No, Your Honor. And she's not here, so she's not, I can't even, I mean, if she were to appear, um, then I could appoint her counsel, have a direct contempt hearing, all those things. But she's, she's filing papers, and she's not participating in the case. She's violating the court orders. I mean, I, I, I can't think of a case that uh, um, has had these kind of frustrations. Uh, not to mention the fact that the court has, it seems like for the course of the last year, bent over backwards to give 
uh, her every opportunity to explain or justify her violations of the court order, and she hasn't at all. Absolutely. Okay. Not. And um, the child is being uh, kept was, from the custodial parent. I mean, it's in the nature of abduction. It's in the nature of abuse. And uh, it looks like you put the recitals from the hearings. Um, <laughs> To say that she's educationally prejudicing him by keeping him out of school is like the most mild form of uh, harm to him that, that, I mean, it's not even in my top three. I mean, she's keeping the child from a custodial parent. She's, uh, who knows what's going on. I mean, because she's obviously, the police are not going to break down the door. She's held up with the child, right? Uh, the police have gone out four times last week. Now that the benchmark is in the NCIC and Aegis system, and this particular policeman will not uh, kick the door and no, he won't. Um, well, I don't. I don't blame them. Right they don't want to do. They don't want to do anything uh, that's that could possibly harm the child. Or, but it's just, I'm surprised. Usually, uh, with the efforts that you've taken, we get possession of the child. Um, well, what we, you, uh, we, we're, the the provisions of the order that the court is willing to approve is uh, a suspension of her legal and physical rights until further order. Uh, two and three are, are substantive requests the court is not going to grant. That's the kind of thing that you would argue to me if and when she asked to restore her legal and physical rights. Uh, there isn't, I, I'm not going to order her to complete some sort of class or undergo drug testing or anything like that. That would be something you would ask if and when she uh, sought to modify the order. Uh, she's already under an order to pay the minimum in child support. Uh, I no, no, Your Honor, I believe there's no order for child support. All right, well, that's that's probably because she's disabled, but... Well, Your Honor, she says she's disabled, she's never proven it. Which I, is one of the things. I understand, but you're asking me to modify child support. It, it, it confuses the issue, okay? Um, the issue is to enforce the order and to modify it to, as a consequence of her abducting the child, okay? The... Um, the court has jurisdiction because the Supreme Court has remanded the matter upon request. The remitter was entered and received, and this court has jurisdiction to consider changes in circumstances since the last custodial order. The material change in circumstance is mom abducting the child and keeping the child from the lawful custodial parent. We have issued orders uh, that have been graduated, ordering her to appear and produce the child. That was successful once after she was ordered to produce the child in court. And then uh, we uh, granted dad a pickup order with the assistance of law enforcement. Uh, when that failed, the court went to the third provision in, I think it's 0055, and ordered that a warrant be issued. The, the warrant is done to pick mom up to coerce compliance with the order. If and when she is picked up on the warrant, the court is compelled and will have a hearing immediately. It will consider whether to appoint her counsel, but will be principally purposed to have her produce the child as ordered. The order from today is that for all the reasons that were stated in the previous hearings uh, and uh, based on the uh, uh, continued uh, violation of the court orders, her legal and physical rights are suspended. Legal and physical rights are solely vested in the plaintiff until further order of the court. Now, I'm going to give you the order so you can file it. Uh, all I did was just redact the, the different other paragraphs. It doesn't mean the court wouldn't grant it or consider granting it. I just want a clean order dealing with the one issue that we told the Supreme Court. Look, if I had asked the Supreme Court to remand the matter to order minimum child support, or if I had ordered to ask the Supreme Court to remand it back so I would send her to parenting classes, or if I had asked the Supreme Court to remand it back to uh, uh, have her submit to drug tests before an order, they wouldn't have done it, okay? They remanded it back, I, I, I'm almost certain, based on, on how severe this is, is because she was ordered to return the child over to the custodial parent, and she hasn't done it. Yeah. And that's an emergency that affects the welfare of the child. And so the court is granting that sole legal and physical custody. Now, you have at least three I'll change this, Your Honor. I'll, I'll, I'll change this. You can do it if you want. I, I know that you're busy. Uh, you know that I'll sign orders incident to this record, okay? Now, as far as mom not appearing, uh, her motion is denied. I would submit a separate order uh, referencing her motion that she set for hearing today that she did not appear and that it has no merit and that it's denied. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you.
Right. Yeah, we and, and just for the court's uh, uh, information, Your Honor, the case is winding its way through the Attorney General's office. I would, may I put language in the order? I'm going to revise that. May I put language in the order saying the court recommends that she be prosecuted under 2.3 and 200.359 quickly? If they care, uh, which they don't, uh, I look. That is a that is a decision that is made by an elected official. Well, executive. I, I understand. Okay. It's just a recommendation. Yeah. No. 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 I'm not recommending anything. The okay. district attorney is an elected official who makes the decisions as to whether to prosecute somebody or not. Yes, sir. Right. May I put the language in that the child is being emotionally abused now? Uh, by that's in there. Uh, okay. Educationally, yes, and, uh, and you know, first of all, the child's being abducted and kept from a rightful custodial parent without justification. And that is the uh, that's the basis for granting him solely on physical custody. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's all I know. Thank you very much.